Now I wasn't going to make a video today because I've got a bit of a cold, but I've got my tissues. But when I saw in this week's Radio Times, they had an article about the sewing bee that's on tonight and the fact that it's all about 1960s and colour blocking, I could not resist showing you something. Now here are some examples of colour blocking that I've done in the past with my mate Shingo Sato. He uses this technique that he's developed called TR cutting. Now today I'm not going to show you the whole how to make the whole dress but I'll show you a technique that he developed where we might be able to create the look of the dress in the background there. Now our starting point is a basic kind of shift dress pattern. I've used a bird of star pattern from one of my previous video tutorials. So long as it's got at least two bus starts, then it will be fine. And what we have to do is we have to cut that out of calico. Now, just cut out the front piece for now, for what we're doing today. And when you've done that and you've mapped out your darts, close those darts, stitch them up, and then we can begin. So I've stitched up my darts. Now on this dummy, it does look like my darts are a bit dropped, but on me, they're fine. So I've stitched up the darts. I've also pressed a line down the center because I always like to know where the center is because it helps with the symmetry of the design that we're about to do for our color blocking. Now, don't look at my nails, okay? I'm trying to hide them from you, but can you see that heart there? The first thing that we're gonna map out is where to position that heart and it is very important that you stick to this rule. Now we are going to draw out a heart on the dress, but what is mega, mega really important when you do this style of TR cutting, color blocking, is you see the end of that? You see your bust point here, that bust point there, and we've got another one there, and that bust point there. Whatever design we do, we have to touch that bust point. So if I did a little wiggle like that, it would be fine so long as I touch that bust point. So it doesn't matter if you don't do it first time. So let's see what sort of heart shape I can get, including the bus point. So that's there. I think that's not too bad. And then if I can continue it down to there, I think that's quite good. Now all I have to do is try and do the same on the other side, which is not as easy as you think. Right, so I've done that fairly symmetrically. It's not brilliant, but I can neaten it off afterwards. Now, just to help you out, it is quite a good idea to color that in, because then you know that that is going to be the pink heart. So we'll leave that like that for now. Now, the next bit that I'm going to deal with, which I can't see all of, I'm hoping you can see that, is the line where the green meets the black. So I'm just roughly mapping it out for the moment because I'm not really sure, but say it goes something like more curvy I think something like that now I'm gonna neaten it off afterwards when I do it on the flat so all of this although that's black all of this is going to be green all of this is going to be green because we are color block blocking and then the stuff down there is going to be black when you've mapped out your shapes sort of roughly, and you have definitely touched your bust points of your darts, then you can lay it out on the flat and using a biro, Shingo always insists that you use a biro so you get a sharp line, 
and a French curve or a ruler if you've got straight lines, you need to redraw your lines so that they're sharper and neater. Right, so this is what we do. You don't have to do this, but it does make it look a bit neater. So using your French curve, you just let it help you get a nicer curve on your on your bends. But you really must remember, remember that bus start? You've really, really got to make sure that whatever shape you're doing, that it does actually touch that bus point. So you see, I've sharpened up all of my lines. I actually completely changed the style line of um, the one at the bottom there. So that's going to be pink, that's going to be green, and that's going to be black. But before we cut out those pieces, it is so, so important that we do notches to mark out where we have to put our pieces together. But it, it really is handy if you label those notches now. And the notches must always go at right angles to the line. Now you don't have to do them the same as mine, but it's good to label them so you know which one corresponds with which. So I've put A here and I've put B to go with the green B there. C to go with the C there, okay? But you can create your own markings. The most important place for you to put your notches are on the curves. So on all of the convex curves and any concave curves, the point at which it curves, it's really important to have your right angle notches there. So just do it all around the heart and then, move on to your curve for the, the bottom. So this is where the green is attached to the black. Now there's a curve here. So I'm doing a right angle notch. And then don't forget to label them. Now also, I'm writing what the colors of the fabrics are going to be as well. So that's got black. And then this one's going to be green. Now there's one more thing that I need to say. Now, what we do is we keep these darts closed. All right, we're losing these darts all together by making the piece that goes in the middle touch the darts. But when we cut out this heart, we need, it, you need this piece to lay flat and it's not gonna lay flat unless you've got an access point somewhere. So, I'm just going to create a line here, so that's going off into the armhole, and I'm going to cut that line, so that line's going to be cut there. So everything is all notched now, and that means it's ready for us to cut out. And when we've cut out the pieces, it's very important that we then press the pieces with an iron so they're really flat and like paper because we're then going to use them as a pattern. And now you have to cut along that very clean, sharp black line that you've created. You've got to cut around this heart but you can access it from in, in there. And then when you've done that, press all your pieces so that they're really flat because then we're going to use those pieces as a pattern. Now I had started to cut them out, but then I thought you'd probably want to see it. Um, now another thing I forgot to say, it's handy to write things like hem, where the hem is, and then if there's a side seam, you can write side seam. Because it can get confusing once you start cutting it all out. So I've cut out the hem, and I'm going to put that down to one side. So now I'm going to cut out this piece. So do you remember I said that the pieces need to be flat? So we're leaving those darts closed, but because they need to be flat, we need an excess point. So 
We're cutting like that and then we're going to start cutting out the heart. So carefully cutting just on that line. Okay, really important that you cut as close to that black line. Now do you see that? Do you see how the pieces are all flat now? I am deteriorating. <laughs> Having watched the program, <coughs> I've seen that they really did focus a lot more on that Yves Saint Laurent Mondrian dress. So if you do decide that you want to do that dress for your colour blocking, it's exactly the same principle, okay? So you, you've got your bust starts, you stitched up your bust starts, those bust points, whatever design you do, so long as it touches those bust points, you can do whatever you want. So look, I've drawn out uh, the kind of stained glass lines, but I made sure that they touch those two bust points. I think you find it really interesting to see this. So you probably think, well, if you don't have the dot line there, then how are you going to get that shape? Well look, we're just relocating the dart line because it just becomes part of this. What I'll do is I'll cut out all the pieces and then you can see what I mean and you can see the shape. Really, really important is with a biro and not a great big pen, you still have to do your notches, so A goes with A, so that you know where all your pieces go. So that's B and B, and just work all your way around the garment. But I would say, look, it's important that you have notches there, isn't it? So that you know it, this joins on here. And always your notches go at right angles to your lines. So I think we probably need notches here. So this is what it looks like when it's all cut up into all its little pieces. So you can see why it's important that you do all your notches and that you label them too, because otherwise you'll get confused. But what I want you to see is this. There was our original dart, but can you see how we've lost it We've lost it into this space here, because what happens is that gets closed and that becomes the dart. But when the dress is all stitched together, it looks like it has no darts at all. It's magic really, isn't it? So in the next part, you can see how we use that now as a pattern to cut out our colours for our colour block dress.